What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you a nice little tier list before season two starts. We've kind of gone over all of the patch notes and kind of looked at all these different variables and kind of what is kind of swirling in the community for Diablo 4. So I just kind of wanted to make a quick little tier list. We're not gonna go too crazy into this uh, because it's more of an opinion piece, but I wanna kind of just bring you my thoughts on each class and just where I would rank them going into the new season with all of the changes. Okay, now do keep in mind that this is just my opinion based off the changes that Blizzard is bringing to the game as well as each class and just how I think the potential for most builds are going to be or how strong, etc. they're going to be. So please take it with a grain of salt. Let me know down in the comments if there's one that's ranked that, you know, isn't where you would think it would be. Please be constructive. Let me know down in the comments, okay? So let's start off with the top tier. You guys already know rogue is still going to be top tier okay we are, i don't know why but rogue is just a favorite over there at blizzard um the devs did state that rogue along with druid are two classes that they believe are very in a very very good spot was the words that they had chosen and rightfully so even when you look at the patch notes and for both of these classes there's not a whole lot of changes to each one now with that said i think that with all of the changes to the dot, the dot damage, the increased poison damage that's gonna happen with Rogue. Not only is Twisting Blades already insane, but now the increased dot damage for the class is gonna make poison Twisting Blades or poison trap, etc. builds just even stronger. So I think Rogue is just in a very, very good spot. All of the speed that the Rogue has, um, it does need a little bit more defense, but with how fast you are and, and being able to weave in and out of combat, you do have such big evasion that it's really hard for you to be hit anyway. Um, now, with along with Twisting Blades, like you still got Flurry, and I think uh, Rogue just has some of the best range builds in the game. I mean, they all got buffed across the board considering the changes to some of these uniques. So I think the Rogue, top tier. Okay, we're not going to do S, you know, A, all that, etc., but it's just going to be a top class in Season 2. And I'm going to say the same exact thing about Druid for some similar reasons. Druid is in a very, very good spot. Druid is my main, even though I'm playing Necromancer at the start, I will be playing Druid second. Now, Druid is in a very good spot, and they made some changes. Yes, they did kind of nerf the, the critical strike or the critical um, damage increase when you were in Grizzly Rage, but that's okay. 200% is still a huge, huge multiplier, considering, and Wolf Tornado is probably still going to be one of the best builds in the game. Okay, now another reason why that the Druid is in the top tier here is because to me personally, I think the Druid has the most build diversity in the game. You have so many different builds that you can do with the Druid. It just makes playing the Druid really, really fun. You can do Lightning Storm, Trample Slide, Poison Creeper. You can do um, Pulverize, which is going to be a very, very strong build with all the overpower damages. You got the multiple three different wolf builds that you can do. And now all the changes to Companions. I think there's just so much build variety for the Druid. And it makes it a very, very exceptional class to play um, in the season. So... And that is even with the changes to Bulwark, which is finally happening. So that way everybody's not just playing Bulwark tier 100 Nightmare Dungeons and just Bulwark is killing everything. So uh, Druid, Insane, still very, very strong at the top of the leaderboards here. Um, next is going to be Necromancer. Necromancer I'm putting in very good. Okay, this is a class I'm going to start with first. And I, Necromancer was already good with Bone Spear as well as some other... Um, shadow type builds like blight or sever shadow damage was very good but now with the huge increase in dot damage again shadow like damage over time builds the dot like blight is going to be very very strong it may even be the strongest build that necromancer has considering this small buff to bone spear even though the dev said that ossified essence key passive is still going to be one of the if not the strongest key passive in the game bone spear is still going to be very very strong for the necromancer but now with some of these changes to dot damage for specific specifically for shadow as well as the huge laundry list of changes to minions now necromancer is going to have some very good build variety and diversity and i just think that necromancer is going to just possibly end up coming up here and some classes coming down like rogue when it's all said and done in the season okay some of them, uh, the overpower changes are really going to open up blood necromancer which is what i'm going to be playing in the season check out the build link down in the description of the video and necromancer is just in a really good spot the only thing that i wish for the necromancer is that we had a little bit more move speed kind of sucks 
uh, druid at the same thing we need a little bit more um, resource generation it's just very slow in the beginning for druid okay next I'm gonna be doing sorcerer sorcerer is a good it's gonna be in that average spot still even with some of the changes um, Hydra is looking very very strong along with uh, lightning because all of those abilities really got buffed in the season uh, for season two and then of course you still all have your ice builds your blizzard builds you still have all of your now better damage over time builds with firewall and incinerate because of the huge buff that they did there and then of course sorcerer has always had a very good balance of defensive skills that really make her very very strong and just consistent across the board now the reason she's not ranked higher is because she has really suffered from the resistances not being in the game now that they're in the game there's just a lot of unknown on how exactly and how well the resistance system is going to work i'm really hoping for the best if it does she is really going to move up to here if not to top tier because the sorcerer has specific passive skills that really benefit her to increase her resistances and as you guys know intelligence based characters which is the necro and sork really benefit from all resist that directly correlates unless something has changed in the game so for right, for right now sorcerer is still going to be just good now barbarian everybody's favorite character that has been nerfed since the start of the season for now barbarian is probably sitting here i can't place it here because it's just going to pull one way or the other but i think barbarian is sitting here okay there's a lot of issues still with barbarian and i don't know why blizzard is crapping on barb barb has a very very slow process in the beginning towards the end game barbarian really starts to flourish now with that said barbarian is very fast very very tanky okay it's probably not a very good beginner friendly build because of how slow it takes to get everything and how slow it takes for the build to come around now with that said there's a lot of changes specifically to the bleed builds for barbarian which invokes like playing spin to win all the time the the spin to win whirlwind bleed build is going to be very very strong rend is going to be very strong rupture is going to be very strong these type of builds are going to be insane for the bar however until you can kind of get to that end game mid to late end game 60 plus and really get things going barbarian just really suffers okay really suffers i could be just completely wrong here guys but i started season one as a barb and even though i was in a party the leveling process was just very very sluggish i felt extremely underpowered i felt extremely slow especially if my shouts were not active and i just felt like i was being carried as the main melee character in my group you know rogue was essentially being carrying the entire party with twisting blades necromancer with bone spear you know it just felt like i was very very underpowered now once i started getting to 60 65 and opening up my paragon board and being able to really get some legendaries and some aspects then barbarian really started to move up to the forefront but until then i really feel like the barbarian just really like it's just sluggish and just really lax in the early stages so for now barbarian is going to be just okay but i think if you if this was going to be an end game tier list then barbarian probably is somewhere like here but for now barbarian is going to be here at the bottom so guys that is going to be my tier list going into season two hopefully i'm right hopefully i'm completely wrong and everything changes which i'm really hoping for i really am excited for season two and i hope that the uh season is just an absolute blast it really kind of helps you know take a huge step forward for the game and for blizzard to really pull this around because i thoroughly enjoyed diablo 4. so guys like the video comment down below let me know what you guys think and let me know what you guys are playing in season two don't forget to subscribe and as always stay gaming i'll see you guys in the next one peace